expensive cap rates are impacting both multifamily investment and development in various ways. Despite these challenges, the demand for rental housing remains strong, driven by that supply demand imbalance. You're listening to The Life and Money Show, a podcast that brings you the stories and strategies of people who are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, building true wealth for their families and impacting the world around them. And now here are your hosts, Annie Dickerson and Julie Lamb. Hey, hey, everyone. Annie Dickerson here. And on behalf of Julie Lamb and the entire Good Egg Investments team, I'm thrilled to welcome you to another episode of the Life and Money Show, where we talk about all things life and money and Today, I wanted to start off by just sharing a little bit personally, you know, as of this recording, I was just in Sedona, Arizona last week, one of my favorite places on all of planet Earth. And I was there for a women's retreat, fantastic, soulful, deep work, just moving grief and rage and getting to the heart of things so that we can experience that lightness of being, the joy, the kindness, the compassion, all of that and doing that in sisterhood. And it was just, there was nothing like it. But I did want to tell you about one uh, part of the retreat, which was perhaps one of my favorite moments where we got to meet some somebody named Sabina, who's a drummer. And Sabina, she's been drumming her entire life. You know, when you meet those people who are just, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that they are doing their life's work. They have a calling and they're doing that thing that they're passionate about. Well, that was Sabina. She's been drumming all her life. She joined her first band when she was 16 and she's drummed with some of the greats, including Benatar and others. And she just has this inner passion for drumming. And what happened was about 20 years ago, she experienced a pretty severe injury that through which she wasn't able to lift her arms and actually drum. And so it took her about four years to recover. But during that time, she just couldn't resist drumming, right? Because that was her calling. And so she picked up djembes and congos and she just started teaching herself how to drum with her hands just to keep that rhythm going. And what I loved about Sabina was even though she's passionate about drumming, she doesn't force that on anybody. But what she does is use drumming to teach about life. And she taught us something that when you're on rhythm and you're just like, you're with that beat in music, it's called being in the pocket, in the pocket. And so she had us do this one exercise where one person was supposed to make up a beat, any beat, doesn't matter, any rhythm. And you just keep that rhythm, right? And everybody else in the room was trying to do everything they can to throw you off that beat, whether through shouting and saying different things or through hitting other drums or instruments, making various sounds to try to throw you off your beat. And Sabina said, as long as you stay in that pocket, you stay in that pocket, you're going to be fine. And that's really what life is about, right? headlines, other people, current events, things at work. There's always going to be something trying to throw you off that beat, but you just got to stay in that pocket and everything will be fine. You got to stay in that rhythm. And I loved that simple, simple, but profound lesson that Sabina taught us. She has over 200 handmade drums. She makes them herself. She has local artists paint them. So it's a really colorful collection of drums. And she does these massive local outdoor drum circles. She also takes them into prisons and schools really to teach about not only her passion for drumming, but help people to use this platform of drumming to really learn deeper lessons. And I was so inspired by all that Sabina does. And hopefully you feel some of that from us here at Good Egg, because as you know, for us, it's not just about the real estate. Real estate is our version of what drumming is to Sabina. We love it. We're total real estate investing nerds ourselves, but we know that may not be your thing. But here's the thing. It's our passion and we want to use that to help you achieve your life by design, to build wealth for your family. And so in that way, we kind of take a little bit of that essence from Sabina, that same thing that she's trying to do and be of service to others through her drumming. And that's what we try to do is be of service to others through 
this platform of real estate investing. And so speaking of which, if you are currently in a place where you're looking for a place to invest some capital, grow your wealth, you can always find our more information about our current and upcoming opportunities on our website at goodegginvestments.com slash deals. And of course, if you are not yet sure who we are or what we're all about, or if we're able to deliver on the returns, because as you know, anybody can say they can deliver double digit 20% plus annual returns or IRs or all that fun stuff, right? Anybody can put that down on paper, but to actually be able to deliver that can sometimes be another story. So we've pulled together the case studies from all the deals that we've exited to date. It's about 20 of them. And we show you the exact projections that we told investors at the very beginning, sometimes four or five years ago, we told them, here's the return you're going to get. And we show you the actual returns that we were able to deliver to investors. And so if you're doing your due diligence, as we always recommend, is do your due diligence on whomever, whichever team you're looking to invest with, always take your time to get to know them. Looking to do that due diligence on our team, you can grab a copy of that track record at goodegginvestments.com slash track record. All right, with that and having set the stage with Sabina and being in the pocket, let's transition and over and talk about our main topic today, which is all about the state of the market and our outlook for commercial multifamily for the remainder of 2023 and what you can expect on the performance of some of our assets as well as general investor sentiment. I mean, these days you look around the headlines and everything that's going on feels a little bit like the economy is a little bit out of pocket, right? The economy is not keeping that beat. Something's going a little awry, little clues here and there. And so over the last quarter, right now, we're well into Q2 of 2023. But over the last quarter or so, we saw the Federal Reserve continue to raise interest rates with more rate hikes likely to come. Of course, they're doing that to try to continue to curb inflation and it's starting to work. So hopefully there won't be too many any additional rate hikes to come, but we will see, right? We've also seen some cracks in the banking industry with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. If you haven't already, go back and listen to that episode. It was just a few episodes ago. We really took a deep dive into exactly what happened as well as the lessons that you as an individual investor can take away from this fascinating story. Now, I'm not one to follow all of the minutia of the banking industry industry news and current events and all all the headlines and all that stuff. But I found this story really relatable, approachable, and just really interesting. And so if you haven't already, go back and listen to that episode. I guarantee you're going to be on the edge of your seat the whole time. And hopefully you'll take away some good lessons from that. But anyway, so we've seen some cracks in the banking industry, right? And it's started to send some ripple effects throughout the financial landscape as a potential indicator of a larger economic downturn and a looming recession. And while the higher interest rates of late might make it more tempting to leave your money sitting idle in your savings account to collect interest, because after all, you can start to see in those smaller regional banks, you might see 3-4% interest, which is significantly more than we've seen over the past several years. But even given that, it's tempting, but smart investors know you just can't save your way to true wealth and freedom. You can save your way to financial security for sure. That's what my parents did. They saved their way. They felt like they had a number that they wanted to get to. They got to that number and they felt secure. But were they truly free and had they created generational wealth? Not quite. And so you can save up to a certain point. But if you really have dreams of creating that generational wealth, I'm going to get that right one of these times. Generational wealth, it's going to take a little bit more. But given all that, where do you find the right, quote, the right investments in this 
environment, especially given that the rising interest rates have led to tighter lending restrictions and increasing difficulty securing low fixed rate debt, thus also making it increasingly difficult to find great investments. So what should you do? Should you plan to keep your money in your savings account and just wait for a little while until things settle down? Or should you continue to invest? But maybe with a little bit, maybe your standards might change or the things you're looking for might change, right? And what might those things be? So as we'll discuss here in a little bit, high level, we remain extremely bullish on commercial multifamily opportunities, particularly as major players like Blackstone are doubling down, closing on the largest real estate private equity fund that they have ever raised, full stop, the largest private equity fund for real estate that they've ever raised because they know that there's going to be tremendous, tremendous opportunities ahead. And so just like Blackstone and other major players, we know that there are going to be really great opportunities ahead and we want to be prepared for that. And we want to make sure you're in a place to take the best advantage that you can of those coming opportunities. But But that does not mean that there's nothing to invest in right now. If you have money sitting idle on the sidelines, don't just let it sit there and wait. I know people who have waited for years, for years for the right opportunities, and they've missed out on those returns. They could have gone into and exited multiple deals in that time, but because they were fearful, they left their money in the savings account idle to collect interest, which means it's still there. It's still growing, but it has missed out on a ton of potential growth. And so it's like the sliding doors, right? The version of you with your money in a savings account versus the version of you being bold and making these decisions, even when you're fearful and seeing those huge opportunities and seeing those huge leaps in growing your wealth. That is what's possible right now. Because as you know, when others are fearful, that's the best time. That's the time you go in. When everybody's running the other way, that's the time when you go in. That's where the opportunities are. So now is that time. And there may not be a whole slew of opportunities right now, but I'm telling you that doesn't mean that the quality of the opportunities is any lower. So in other words, right now, even though it's not like everywhere you look, there's a great opportunity, that time is coming. But right now, because there's less competition, because some people are like, you know what, with the lending restrictions, I'm going to wait a little bit. So there's less competition right now. But if you know where to look and you know what you're looking for, there can be some really, really great opportunities. And we're going to talk about some of that in a bit, including the opportunity we have in hand right now that's under contract at a low, low fixed rate, a multifamily property at a low fixed rate of 3.8% interest, which If you were to get a fresh loan right now, you couldn't even get close to that. So we're going to talk about that, how we're able to find deals like that and what we're doing to continue to find those gems during this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our outlook for the remainder of 2023 as it relates specifically to commercial multifamily. We're going to talk about our acquisitions, our standards, and our strategies, especially at a time like this. We're going to give you a glimpse into some of our current holdings in our portfolio, and we're going to talk about some of the things that we're hearing from investors just like you. All right. So with all of that, hopefully we'll get you to a point where you have a better handle on what's going on out there because it can be really tough with all of these headlines swirling around, tough for you to really understand what's going on. So that's what we hope to get you to through this conversation. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in to multifamily. It's our bread and butter. We love multifamily because as you know, people like to live indoors. <laughs> and so there's always going to be a demand for affordable housing. And so let's talk about the multifamily sector. Well, the U.S. multifamily sector is expected to continue above average performance in 2023, despite economic turmoil and disruptions in the capital markets. Now, 
We will likely not see the sub 3% vacancy rates or double digit rent growth as we've seen in the past couple of years, but overall, the market demand is expected to remain steady. And so let's look at that, the occupancy rates. Now, according to uh, CBRE's US multifamily report from Q4 of 2022, the overall US occupancy rates are expected to remain above 95% with annual rent growth expectations of over 4%, which is a very healthy forecast. But here's the thing, although growth expectations remain strong, we're also keeping a very close eye on new inventory to the market because as you know, that can shift the equation. Now, CBRE expects 450,000 units to be delivered in 2023, adding about 2.6% to the total inventory. And in addition, there are another 300,000 units or so under construction that will be delivered in early 2024. And while we expect these new deliveries to affect short-term leasing activity, overall demand is expected to continue to grow. CBRE predicts that nearly 3.5 million new market rate multifamily units will be needed by 2035 to keep pace with overall demand throughout the U.S. It's a lot. 3.5 million new units needed within the next 12 years or so to keep pace with the overall demand. So that means there's a lot of room for additional new developments, but also a ton of ongoing demand for the types of multifamily units that we will continue to invest in. Now, according to Bricadia's 2023 forecast, net absorption is projected to reach the second highest level in more than two decades. Bricadia forecasts the national occupancy rate to settle at about 95% in the fourth quarter of 2023, down just 70 basis points or 0.7% from 2022. So what that means is that with that net absorption being so high, that means that even with all those new units coming online, they're going to get snatched right up because there's so much demand for these multifamily units. Now that year end occupancy rate would be higher than the pre-pandemic cycle average of 94.7% during the period of time from 2010 to 2019. So what all that means is that multifamily continues to be a strong and stable investment. Now, as interest rates continue to rise, renters continue to grapple with the idea of purchasing versus renting. I mean, think about it, right? If you were on the cusp of buying a house within the last several months or a year, and you're watching as these interest rates continue to climb, you're going to look at your purchasing power and you're like, oh man, all of a sudden I can't afford that million dollar home. Now I can only afford 700,000 or 800,000, right? Because those rising interest rates impact your monthly payments. You're having to pay more in your mortgage and interest because those rates continue to rise. And so your purchasing power comes down. And so a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I might just wait. I might not buy right now. I might continue to rent. And so that's keeping that rental demand stable and high. CBRE calculates that the average house payment for newly purchased homes in late 2022 was 57% more expensive than the average monthly apartment rent, which is the widest cost gap on record. Even if home values continue to fall and mortgage rates drop in the latter half of 2023, the relatively lower cost of renting will continue to keep multifamily demand strong, which is partly why we continue to be so bullish on multifamily acquisitions and the multifamily rental market in general. Now, let's talk a little bit about our approach to underwriting and acquisitions in this shifting market. Now, it's tempting a lot of various people do it different ways. Let me put it that way. As the market shifts, some people will change their underwriting standards to meet 
what they're seeing out there. But here at Good Egg Investments, as you know, we continue to remain steadfast in our conservative approach to underwriting. If anything, we're making things more conservative than we were a few years ago because we know that the money is made when you buy. And so we know if we're going to acquire any properties right now, we're never doing a deal just to do a deal. And we're always looking very scrupulously at every single line item. And if anything, we're dialing up how conservative we are. Now, as cap rates have expanded and interest rates continue to increase, a critical eye on deal metrics becomes increasingly important as we look to limit risk. Now, according to CBRE's 2023 multifamily report, rising interest rates have led to more multifamily purchases in which mortgage rates exceed the cap rate. And while this gap is expected to narrow over the coming months, lowered rental growth expectations throughout the market have caused a slowdown in deal velocity. Now, again, as we've talked about, just because there aren't as many deals being done doesn't mean that the quality of those deals is any lower, right? You just have to know where to find those hidden gems. Now, sale transactions for multifamily assets are still closing but they are focused primarily in high growth markets throughout the South and the Southeast, which is exactly the areas that we are targeting. Now, individual markets with population and job growth expectations that beat the national averages are still in great demand. And some of those standout stars include Dallas, Orlando, where our Encore Metro Millennia property that is currently under contract is located, and Jacksonville and some other very strong markets. Now, As in the previous quarter, we have updated our underwriting standards and investment thesis with the expectation of lowered projected rental growth in year one and year two for any new acquisition, meaning we're being more conservative. We're saying, okay, well, in recent years, it's been double digit growth, right? But we can't count on that. We're going to continue to dial down our expectations. So if we see some tremendous growth, that's gravy. But If things go in a different direction, we've already accounted for that. And that's across the board on all of our investments. We're always looking at things with a very critical eye. And we've also underwritten higher exit cap rates in an effort to compensate for continued interest rate expansion. And so what that means is that even if and as the market shifts and in the coming years, those prices may go up, up and up and up, we're not counting on that. We're counting on selling for lower and at a higher exit cap rate, which means we're selling at a lower price than we could, but we're accounting for that in the underwriting so that if we're able to sell for lower cap rate, great, that's gravy. But all of our underwriting is extremely conservative. So let's look at acquisitions now. Let's look at our acquisition strategy and outlook. Now, in the first quarter of 2023, our acquisitions focused on a few key strategies to optimize returns and mitigate potential risks. One such strategy was the acquisition of properties with long-term in-place fixed rate debt. Long-term in-place fixed rate debt. Now, this approach allows investors to reduce exposure to rising interest rates, which can have a significant impact on real estate investments. Now, the Fed's interest rate increases have created challenges for navigating the real estate market in general. Higher capital costs, rising rents, expensive cap rates are impacting both multifamily investment and development in various ways. But as we've talked about, despite these challenges, the demand for rental housing remains strong, driven by that supply-demand imbalance. Now, as we've talked about, the interest rate hikes are making it difficult for potential home buyers to enter the housing market, but that's good for us as we invest in multifamily rentals because it's driving that demand for rental units and keeping that top line income steady. Due to the higher required return from risk assets, cap rates for apartment assets have generally increased depending on the market and investment profile, of course. Have 
Have you been thinking about investing in real estate, but aren't sure you have the time or the desire to manage the investment? Perhaps you're afraid, like we were, that you'll make the mistake of choosing the wrong market or the wrong team and lose your entire investment. Well, that's exactly why we created the Good Egg Investor Club. We do the work of identifying solid real estate investment opportunities in the best markets around the country and then partner with you to acquire these investments and then we'll all share in the returns. We'll identify the growing markets, strong, experienced teams, and the solid deals. We do all the heavy lifting of managing the tenants and the renovations, and as a passive partner, you get to enjoy all the benefits of investing in real estate, monthly cash flow, long-term appreciation, and the ongoing tax benefits. When we first discovered passive investing through real estate syndications, we realized it fit perfectly into our busy lives. We could put our money to work for our families, work less, and get more time back in our days so that we could focus on what matters most and discover our true passion and purpose in life. We've now helped hundreds of people invest passively in real estate syndications and are seeing the positive impact it's had on their lives. We invite you to partner with us by joining the Good Egg Investor Club today so you can start putting your money to work for you and get more time back in your day because we know that when people have more time in their days, they can do the true work they were intended to do and the world will be a better place. To sign up for the Good Egg Investor Club, go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest and we'll take it from there. That's goodegginvestments.com slash invest. The financing environment today is drastically different from previous years, resulting in lower leverage in general and higher costs. Some borrowers who have relied on low interest rates since 2020 and may have borrowed up to 80 or 85% of cost without buying rate caps may face some real challenges as their loans mature and refinancing becomes necessary. And this is why we work so hard to make sure that we cross all the T's and dot all the I's on the buy. When we go in, we make sure we've got reasonable leverage. We're not over leveraged and we've got rate caps in place so that we're protected. We're hedging against those increased rate hikes. Now, with some of these deals out there, those who have relied on those low interest rates and who may not have rate caps, this could lead to capital calls. It could lead to underwater refinancings, meaning you're losing money or some other issues that may result in having to put in more money or potentially foreclosure as well. So we're wishing the best for everybody out there. Hopefully none of you who are listening are part of any of those deals, but we are hearing from some of our investors that some of the investments they've made with some other groups, some other teams are starting to see things like capital calls. It's never fun, but if you ever want a second opinion, you want to just talk through it and better understand whether it's a deal with us or not, feel free to reach out to our team. We're always happy to share what we're doing personally, as well as what some other investors might be seeing out there as well. Now, we anticipate seeing more of these types of investment options in 2023, those where there may need to be some rescue funds that come in for those investments that need a little bit more capital infusion. We anticipate seeing some more of these types of investments in the latter half of 2023 as investors with near-term debt or investment vehicle maturities seek an exit or open-ended funds seek to raise liquidity to accommodate redemption requests. Now, despite these challenges, we see opportunities, tremendous opportunities in this unique market situation by taking advantage of some of these opportunities from distressed debt sellers. And we plan to invest in deals with lower basis than previous buyers using lower leverage debt and fixed rate options to lower the risk profile of the investments. But this is definitely one avenue that we are exploring. And if we can work it out, it helps to rescue or to save 
those investments that otherwise would be underwater. And it also gives us and our investors, all of you, an opportunity for a really potentially some really great investments. Now, as you know, we remain optimistic about the longer term prospects for multifamily and we see potential in investing in rescue capital in the form of preferred equity to owners of distressed properties who are still trying to keep them. Now, there's huge potential to purchase these, there's huge potential to purchase these deals or provide rescue equity at a great basis with relatively higher interest rates. So that's definitely something that we're looking at. Now, we don't anticipate that interest rates will stay high forever. We think that interest rates will cool off in the next two to three years, which would create opportunities to refinance and thus return significant capital back to investors or sell properties as cap rates should compress with lower interest rates, thus resulting in higher sales prices. Don't you just love all this economic stuff? I remember back in college, I just could not wrap my head around the whole, like, when this goes up, this goes down. And when this goes down, that goes up. But it's just, it's fascinating now that we're in the middle of it to really see it happen in real time. Now, as you may know, those of you who are investing with us or who have been looking at our opportunities, we've been able to leverage this strategy with both of the active acquisitions currently in our pipeline, um, the first being Encore Metro at Millennia in Orlando, Florida, which is part of Good Egg Wealth Fund 2. With that one, we're assuming a long-term HUD loan direct from the developer with a low fixed interest rate of 3.8%. Whew. And again, you just can't get that if you were to get a fresh loan. The same with the hotel portfolio that we are acquiring through Good Egg Diversification Fund 3. That's a portfolio of hotels in Indiana. And with that, we're assuming a fixed rate debt at 3.87%. So kind of the same level as with the Encore. And by locking in these favorable rates on all these acquisitions currently in the pipeline, we've been able to protect your investments against current and potential future rate hikes, thus providing you stability and predictability for your investments. All right, so let's talk just a little bit more about those acquisitions in process. So just so you can understand a little bit more about what we look for and why we love these acquisitions so much. Again, these are those hidden gems that we work so hard to find. So the first one is Encore Metro at Millennia. It's the first asset within Good Egg Wealth Fund 2, which as of this recording is currently it's still open and accepting new investments. So if you're an accredited investor looking to place some capital, perk up your ears because this information will be very relevant to you if you're considering investing with us. So this asset, Encore Metro at Millennia, is, first of all, it's this acquisition is on track and progressing very well. Encore Metro is a 215-unit Class A multifamily asset built in 2021, and we are purchasing this asset directly from the developer. Now, built in 2021, that tells us a ton of things, right? It means it's new or newer, which means it doesn't have it hasn't had time to have some of that deferred maintenance that if we were to acquire an older property, that older properties might see, right? So we're eliminating a lot of that risk up front. Now, we have successfully completed our due diligence on this asset with green lights all the way. We are thrilled about this asset. We can't wait to close on it. In fact, the appraisal for this asset actually came in at nearly $5 million above our purchase price, the price that we've already locked in, meaning that buying this asset at a significant discount. As you know, we're assuming the existing loan on the asset, which is at a fixed rate of 3.8%, which is a huge advantage for this deal and a big part of why it's such a great investment, particularly in the current economic climate. Now, the ongoing performance for this asset is very strong, and we project that this property will close very soon. All right, so that's Encore Metro in Orlando. And again, that's part of Good Egg Wealth Fund 2. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash fund two. That's fund and the number two. 
All right. And we know a number of you are interested in hotels with our latest hotel portfolio acquisition, which is nearing the finish line. This is Good Egg Diversification Fund 3. All of the hotel assets in this portfolio continue to perform exceptionally well. And though the acquisition is taking just a little longer than expected, due in part to the loan assumption and all the lender restrictions and criteria that come with that, We're working very closely with the lender every step of the way to move this deal toward a successful close. And we're making some traction and we're getting there. So thank you for those of you who are in this deal. Thank you for your ongoing patience. But I promise you, you're going to be thrilled with this deal because the ongoing performance is just absolutely stellar. And as a reminder for any investors, if you have already invested in this deal, you are already accruing your preferred return even before the deal officially closes. That's how great this deal is. And that's how much confidence we have in this deal. Now, if you missed out on this one, don't worry, because in the coming weeks and months, we're going to be announcing our very first Good Egg Hotel Fund 1. And we're going to have lots more information about that. But as you know, while the cash flow on multifamily these days might be a little bit lower, the demand is still there. But because of various things in the economic climate, the cash flow in multifamily is a little bit lower than in recent years. The investments are still very strong, but if you're looking for cash flow or you're looking for a balance of cash flow and appreciation, hotels can be a great way to diversify and to bring in some more of that cash flow into your overall portfolio. So again, stay tuned for that. And again, for more information about this or other current or upcoming opportunities, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash deals. Okay. So with that, let's talk a little bit more about our current portfolio, right? Because it's not just about new deals coming in. We got to make sure that everything that's in our portfolio right now continues to do well in spite of all the uncertainty and the shifts in the economic landscape. Now, while we are certainly not immune to the rising interest rate environment, we are working hard behind the scenes to explore and exhaust all potential options that we believe will minimize the impact and provide long-term stability to all the assets in our portfolio. Now, it's important to note that the performance of all assets in the Good Egg portfolio remains strong. In fact, all of our properties have exceeded market occupancy averages when compared to their peers for the first quarter of 2023. Now, here are just a few select examples from the Good Egg portfolio showing actual occupancy versus market averages. So those of you who invested with us in Good Egg Wealth Fund 1, which closed last year, the Mission Antigua in Tucson, Arizona, was part of that portfolio. And it's seeing an average occupancy of 94.8%, almost 95% versus the Tucson market and asset submarket averages of around 91.7% and 93.6% respectively, right? So we're ahead. And I'll give you one more example. Waterley in Wilmington, North Carolina, formerly known as Waterleaf at Leland. And the average occupancy there is at 94.2% versus the market and submarket averages of 88 and 84% respectively. So we're significantly above those averages. All right. So we've got others. If you're interested, definitely go to our website. You can find more information there. And of course, for any current investors, you can go into the Good Egg Investor Portal and find detailed information about each of your investments, the occupancy rates, the collection rates, all of that on an ongoing basis. All right. Now let's shift because I definitely want to talk about strategy with our existing portfolio. Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of excitement when it comes to acquisitions, right? You got this new property. I remember when I was investing in rental properties, that was my interest too. I was like, oh my gosh, looking at the markets and looking, underwriting the deals. The excitement is when you buy, right? But to actually see through to fruition those final returns, you've got to maintain that excitement throughout 
the hold period. And that's what we love our asset management team for because they keep that excitement. They love all the little details on the, all the ongoing improvements and refining that strategy over time. So even with the strong performance of the assets within the portfolio, trust us, we continue to keep our finger on the pulse. We're not sitting back. We're continuing to refine and shift our strategies to meet what's going on with the larger market and continue to monitor the debt and the cap rates for opportunities to secure and enhance the assets and our debt positions. Now, as part of this, we are continuing to build up the reserves for each of our assets in our portfolio to further bolster the health of each property and thereby to further protect your investment, right? It's like, you know, it's common sense, right? Like with my kids, I tell them, they're like, oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I'm like, well, how much money do you have in your savings account? They each have a, a debit card and savings account. And if they haven't saved up that money, but they find that great thing that they want to spend money on, you're out of luck, right? You didn't save up the money. You didn't have those reserves in place so that you would have that money in case you wanted to or needed to spend it on something. And that's the main strategy I wanted to talk to you about is with each of our properties, we've really taken this time to bolster the reserves on every asset in the portfolio. Because just like you, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's coming down the pipeline. And so we want to be sure that that we are protected, that your investment is protected, that it's got plenty of buffer in place. So we don't need to go to you for a capital call, that those reserves are the first line of defense. If anything is needed on the property that's unexpected or anything happens, we have those reserves in place. And that's also part of why if you're investing, if you've already invested with us, you might be seeing some lower cash flow on some of your investments and that's on purpose. There are some operators out there who are continuing to send out the same cash flow distributions that they have in previous years. And the reason that we're not doing that is because we want to be proactive. We are intentionally, even though it's not fun and it's not easy and we're investing right alongside you. So our distributions are going down just like yours. But we're making that strategic decision to hold back on cash flow distributions so that we can keep more money with each of these assets. And in fact, nearly all of the assets in the Good Egg portfolio have reserves above and beyond a million dollars to provide ample buffer and to cushion and protect your investment. So here are just a few examples from the Good Egg portfolio. We have Royal Spring, which was part of, actually, Royal Spring closed a couple years ago. I'm thinking of the Sarah at Lake Houston. Well, both of those properties in Houston, Texas, have right around $2 million in reserves apiece. Waterly, which we were just talking about in Wilmington, North Carolina, we have current reserves of 1.75 million and Congaree Villas in Columbia, South Carolina. That's a bit of a smaller property at just over a hundred units. We have over a million dollars in reserves and we're just trying to do everything we can to build up those reserves because it's all about the delayed gratification, right? It's not necessarily about getting all that cash flow right now. It's really about making sure that those assets are protected, that your money is protected no matter what comes so that you don't have to put more money in and you don't have to worry about your investment. So you might be seeing some lower cash flow now and certainly for any additional multifamily acquisitions, any additional multi-investments that you're making, multifamily investments you're making, you might be seeing that lower cash flow at least for the first couple of years, but that's in large part because of what we're seeing in the economy right now and our strategy to make sure that we are really focusing on the health of the asset and not just paying out returns to pay out returns. So just a little bit of the thinking behind the scenes so you better understand what we're doing to, like Sabina says, stay in the pocket. We're trying to stay in that pocket. All these things are trying to knock us off our beat, but we got to stay true to that beat. We got to stay in that pocket. And so building up those reserves is a big part of what we're doing to stay in the pocket no matter what happens. 
And so as we look ahead, multifamily investment, it's slowed in the second half of 2022, right? I'm sure you've seen that, felt that, and we've seen that as well. Higher commercial mortgage rates have sent many investors to the sidelines. And due to their willingness to accept higher risk, private buyers have helped to keep overall activity fairly consistent. Institutional buyers, they may have been slow to act, but predictions are for stronger market activity in the latter half of 2023. And so again, it's not that there's not great opportunities now, but there's going to be a higher volume of activity that we predict in the latter half of 2023. But we still firmly believe in the underlying fundamentals of the multifamily sector, whether it's now or months and years from now. As the market continues to stabilize throughout 2023, investors and lenders will increasingly deploy capital into the market. And we're doing everything we can to prepare you for that so you can be part of those opportunities as well. And as we look ahead, we're continuing to confidently bid on multifamily assets located, again, in those strong areas, including the Sunbelt markets, those areas where we're seeing strong job growth, strong population growth, and we foresee a real bona fide opportunity in 2023 to stabilize at cap rates much higher than possible when compared with previous years. And in addition, we see upcoming opportunities to take a financial position in performing assets with strong occupancy that are faced with interest rate exposure. We are well considering the placement of funds to obtain above market returns in a preferred equity position. Again, we're exploring all of that, the rescue funds, all of those opportunities, but stay tuned for more to come on all of that. And again, if you want to get a full picture of our track record and our extensive experience through the dozens and dozens of deals that we've done, as well as the 20 or so deals that we've exited to date, we invite you to download a copy of our track record, which will show you the original projections as well as the actual results on all deals we've exited to date. And to get that, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash track record. Now, lastly, we want to close out and talk about investor sentiment, some of the things that we're hearing from all of you. Now, as you know, we are extremely grateful for the trust that all of you have granted us over the years. We love you guys so much. We talk about you all the freaking time in every meeting. We're always talking about how much we love all of you, the Good Egg community, the Good Egg investors, whether you've invested with us or not the support and the ongoing engagement just means so much to us. And we're over the moon. We're over overwhelmed with gratitude that so many of you continue to invest in our new offerings each and every month. And on top of that, We're so grateful to have the opportunity every week to meet so many of you during our new Good Egg Popovers sessions. We're there to hear your questions and ideas and to hear more about your goals and dreams. And often in those sessions, we're not just talking about real estate and these deals. We're really talking about your life by design, about how these investments work and how they fit in to your overall strategy. And so if you haven't already, ready, you can go to our website, go to investments.com and down at the bottom, you can learn more about those popover sessions and sign up so that you can come meet our team. And again, those are every week. Now, as fellow investors, and we invest alongside you in all of these deals, we're humbled to be working alongside all of you to continually build wealth, limit risk, and positively impact the lives of all those within the Good Egg community. Now, we have a bunch of new investors join the Good Egg community each and every day. And as the economic forces in the market have become more difficult, along with highlights in the news, as you've seen, we've seen that investors are looking for value and a solid platform and a team with strong track record and strong results. And 
So our stellar track record is always available, as you've heard, and speaks to our consistent focus on stable market factors. On average, our new investor activity has increased by more than 25% over years prior. And we're just thrilled to see that so many of you are seeing our value and are continuing to put your trust with us and partnering with us in these great opportunities. Now, of course, we always consider it one of the highest honors that you could ever give us when you refer your friends and family to invest together with us, which is something that so many of you have done and continue to do. In fact, Well, over 50% of all of our investors have taken the step of making additional investments and or referring new investors to us. In fact, we even have some of you in the Good Egg community who may, for whatever reason, maybe it's not right timing for you, or maybe you don't have the funds yet. Maybe you haven't reached that accredited status. You haven't invested with us, but you've sent us your family and friends. And for that, we are so grateful. It means the world to us that you continue to trust in us and our team enough. You send people within your network to us. Again, it's the highest compliment you could possibly give us. And we take the responsibility of protecting and growing the collective wealth of your family and friends very seriously, because we know your reputation is on the line when you refer them to us. And we take that responsibility very seriously. And no matter how big we get or how many acquisitions we pursue, know that we are never too busy for your referral. So keep sending them our way. We love them. What we're hearing from a lot of you, the clear feedback is that there is a desire to create consistent cash flow with, of course, a conservative approach to risk. And simultaneously, many of you are asking us to find opportunities to maximize that long-term value creation. So we're looking every day, we're working hard to find those opportunities to fit within your greater portfolio and to help you reach your investing goals. But know that for us, our goals have largely remained the same. We aim to create surety and consistency with a long-term view on strong returns on exit. And to that end, and based on feedback from all of you, we are looking at a number of investment opportunities, not only within multifamily, but also outside of multifamily. So stay tuned for some exciting new fund launches in the coming months that will help you to diversify your risk while creating the opportunity for above market returns. As always, we very much value your input. So definitely, if you have any feedback or anything you're looking for that we're not providing, feel free to reach out to our team at any time. Now, as we continue to face a volatile economy and we look forward, we stay focused on sourcing strong investments in both multifamily and hotels. We're bullish on the overall market and have an incredibly strong pipeline of projects that we are considering. As we kick off quarter two officially, we're well into Q2 of 2023. We are very excited about the opportunities ahead. The future for investments is incredibly strong and we are thrilled to be in a position to help all of you to strategically and intentionally protect and grow your wealth in this quarter and beyond. Of course, if you're an accredited investor and haven't already We invite you to join the Good Egg Investor Club so you can stay in the loop on all of our current and future investment opportunities. Just go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest. And remember that we do have our current investment still open, Good Egg Wealth Fund 2, and we are still accepting investments from accredited investors for Good Egg Wealth Fund 2. So just go to goodegginvestments.com slash fund and the number two to learn more about that opportunity. And of course, If you know anyone who wants to build their wealth, we would love it if you would tell them all about this podcast. Send them to our website. And remember, we're never too busy for your introductions and your referrals. Listen, we know there's a lot going on out there. We know you've got a lot on your plate. And now with all the things going on swirling around in the headlines, you may not know which way is up but you can place your trust in us. We're keeping our pulse 
tightly on the market and everything that's going on. And we're looking very closely at everything that's going on. And we're looking very closely at every acquisition that we're making and being very conservative in our approach to every acquisition. And so just as we've said at the top of this episode, we're working very hard to stay in the pocket. And we're so grateful to all of you for your ongoing support and your trust in us. And here's to a fantastic Q2, the rest of Q2 and the rest of 2023. So with that, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Life and Money Show. Here's to a fantastic rest of Q2 ahead for you. And again, if you're looking to grow your wealth, reach out to our team, learn more about our opportunities, and we would be thrilled to partner together with you. Till next time, thanks so much for listening. You've been listening to the Life and Money Show, the number one podcast for people who, like you, are living a meaningful and intentional life by design, building true wealth, and making an impact in the world. For more resources, check out goodegginvestments.com and be sure to join the Life and Money Show community on Facebook. And if you got value out of this show, please subscribe and give us a five-star review so we can continue to bring you amazing new conversations. 